Thanks for coming. Uh, in the beginning, let me do a really quick introduction of who I am and what I've done. Uh, I began in this field working for Playtech for three years, creating more than 80 game specs. There we go. Creating more than 80 game specs for our slot games. And then I moved to Slotomania, to Playtica, where I was responsible for creating uh, slot games for Slotomania and to the casino. I moved in just before what was called at the time the big exit, and today we call it the small exit. And from that point on, I became a slot consultant, helping companies create better KPIs, social slot companies. <coughs> so the thing I concentrate on is what I do research in looking at the wide field, as you can see, I've seen many companies, what works, what doesn't work, what actually matters, what makes people stay longer, what makes people pay more within the product itself. So when you leave here today, you will get an exclusive math model that has improved one company's average revenue per daily average user by 43%, time on machine by 350%, and another company's revenue per paying user by 600%. <coughs> and we're going to talk only about math. This is an exclusive math model. This information worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to you. You get here, here for free. The reason you get it for free is, I've learned this is my fifth time talking in Casual Connect, and my experience has been, uh, in Casual Connect, that if I give you stuff for free, you go home, you try it, you see that it works, and then you come back and you ask me for more stuff. And now you know that what I say works. So, <coughs> in covering the latest math model, we're going to do, we're going to cover what's been happening so far and how we got to this point. And this basically covers the entire field. So, in the beginning, when social slot models started, all they had to go on was basic, classic, role, uh, real money gaming, maths. That's the only slots that ever existed. You had casino, you had actual machines, you had video slots, and you had actual, and those were, th that was how math worked. There was only one way to do a math for social slots. And that's how math began in social slot. What does this mean? It means frequency of wins was usually one to three or four spins. Frequency of each feature, like a bonus or uh, free spins, stuff like that. It moved around, but basically it was one in 90 to one in 100 spins. Payout, this is not like the classic real money gaming models, was about 94.5 to 97.5 percent. Payout RTP, return to player. And in real money gaming, you usually got, you, some casinos have 88%, 82%. Uh, that changes. Uh, you, casi social casinos didn't go higher than this because with all the, for people who actually played to advance, if you play, uh, if you play a lot and you get the, the hourly bonuses, the daily bonuses, you gift friends, you actually, that makes up for another one or two percent of the RTP. So, Every, you have to add one or two percent to that RTP to see the player's actual RTP. But we're talking about inside the game. <coughs> and then came social math. Social math was arrived at by accident in quite a few places. I can tell you, uh, for me, I did a math that was slightly different, and the results for it were huge in how people responded to it. I know it wasn't the graphics, because the graphics were so-so. And I know it wasn't the theme because the theme was not that good. So it was the math. People respond to the math by playing a lot more and spending a lot more. At the same time, big companies arrived at the same thing by accident. And then they basically, a, B, some of them, the biggest ones, A, B tested their math and saw that it was actually working better than 
the regular RNG math. So why does it work differently and why are the two different types of math? Players' expectations are different. When you go to play a real money game, you expect it to be serious. It's a serious thing even if you play it for fun. You go to a casino, it's a serious thing. The graphics are more serious than they are in social slots and so is the math. When people come to play social slots, they come to play for fun. They come to enjoy, it's a game. So you have to give them a more, a, an experience that is more game-like and more fun. And we know what, they, what makes slots fun, and that's winning. <coughs> so that gave us a new math model. Here are the frequencies for the new social kind of math. You've got one in 2.5 to three spins. That's a win. It happens more often than before. Frequency of each feature was, became more often, bonuses. Online features, free spins, and so on. One in 60 to 70, if you've got free spins and bonus, that's one in 30 to 35. If you've got three features, that's one in 20. Winning happens all the time. And wins come more often. The RTP stays the same, more or less. And that is social math. And then came the T3 math model. Here's the story behind it. A company came to me, <coughs> and if you want to know the name of the company and the entire, the whole details, you can find it on my LinkedIn page. They approved me telling the details over there, but I would rather keep that for there. A company came to me that had a game with about 15 to 17 slots, I don't remember right now, and the graphics were not that good, the themes were, were not good, and the math was both, it didn't have a good experience and it had a positive RTP. More than 100%, people kept winning and winning. And in a previous uh, lecture, and also if you want later, I can explain why an RTP over 100 is not a good thing. So, people weren't actually playing the game. They wanted better stats. They wanted everything to be, uh, they wanted better KPIs, better monetization, better retention and they want to do it quickly and cheaply because they didn't have a lot of money. And you can't improve 15 to 17 graphics of games quickly or cheaply. So I said, I would change, I would create something new for your math. We changed all the math for all the games. And, and once we did uh, change the math and change the economy and you got all the very nice stats that you, got, you saw in the beginning. That happened immediately. And it was just the math, it still had bad graphics. It was like people were playing without looking at what they were seeing because they didn't like what they were seeing, but they played like they did. And in addition, another side uh, story to this, I told them they had uh, a few players which actually liked the game, because most people left the game. I told them, the players who like the game, this is not a change for them. This is a change for the new players coming in to make them stay longer. And the players who like the game already, you're going to have to take the money away. They accumulated a lot of money. And then we're going to implement a math that takes money away from them. They can't win all the time. And so they're going to complain. Please ignore them. And after the, the math came out, I asked them, what did the regular players say? What did your uh, existing players say? And actually, they called or emailed to thank the game for changing and for taking the money away from them. So that's like crazy. Okay. So why did things have to change and where did they go? In the beginning we had a classic, this is a graph of fun. This is the RMG, real money gaming experience. Then you had the social slot experience, it's more fun. And the T3 model would have had to be here, if you're reverse engineering. It has to be here, it has to be more fun. So. What do social players like? They like quick highs. They like fast bonus, fast free spins, and fast wins. We know this. And we can do, how do you make wins come faster? Is it bonus or free spins? You can make that come faster, but it's not going to change a lot. But can you have a win every 1.2 to 1.9 spins? If you do, that would ruin your RTP. It would bring it more than 100, which it shouldn't be, unless, RTP is irrelevant. 
<coughs> so here's the thing, RTP is irrelevant because it doesn't tell you how fast the player is losing his money. Meaning, if you have a 95% RTP, you could take 8,000 spins to lose it with a certain type of game. That's too much. That's like playing a long, 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 long time. You could have for the same payout, you could have one winning payout and everything else loses and then it takes you, if you have 100 times your spins, that takes you, that means you lose your, your, uh, uh, your entire fortune in 100 spins. So anything between losing everything at once and losing everything as, like in weeks, in the beginning, all of that is 95% RTP. RTP doesn't tell you how fast the player is losing money, which means it doesn't tell you what the player experience is. So, to create a new math, we have to create a new kind of concept, which is called rate of exhaustion. Rate of exhaustion, this is the definition. The average number of spins in which if the player starts with 100, 100 times his total bet, the player loses money. So you run simulations because math can't do that for you. You take the game that you have with the reels that you have, and you try it out. You start the player with 100 times his regular his bet, it doesn't matter if the bet is one or 100 or one million. 100 times that, and that is the total bet on the max lines. And then you let the game spin automatically until the player can no longer spin again with that bet. Then you could take that number, let's say it's N1. That's N1, that's how, how many spins the player had. And then you do that tens of thousands of times you take the mean, not the average, but the mean, which is a more reliable average. You take the mean of all those numbers, and that is your rate of exhaustion. So it's basically, you take how many, on average, that's the mean, uh, spins does the player actually have to spin with that math, okay? So the rate of exhaustion is more important than RTP. Using rate of exhaustion allows us to control the player's experience. You know how fast the player is losing his money, and as you'll see. And you can control his game time, which is good for your economy because 95% RTP doesn't tell you how fast he'll be losing his money. And it makes the game last as much as the player is used to while feeling like he's playing a 95% game. What does that mean? Everyone who's been in this industry for a while knows that the players feel when you change the RTP. If you improve the RTP by 0.5%, players feel it. If you make it worse by 0.5, players feel it. What do they feel? They don't feel the RTP. They feel that they can now play longer, or they feel they can now play less time. That's the rate of exhaustion. That's not the RTP. So let's see what games actually feel like, what RTP actually feels like. So, if you've got rate of exhaustion that's over 2,000, that feels like RTP is way over 100. Even though the player is actually losing money, it feels like he's playing a game where he keeps on winning. It's very strange. I know of a game, uh, which will remain nameless now, uh, where one of, the, one of the slots there has an RTP of over 2,000, and the other games there do not. So players lose money in the other slots, go back to this game, which has an RTP of about 97%. They go there to win money, because to have an RTP, an ROE that high, you have a lot of wins, you, are, you have them come often, and you don't notice when you lose, but you do lose. They go to that game to win, because they think the RTP there is over 100, and then they spend the money they won there on the other games. So, again, statistically, they lose money over time. It's just a matter of how long. But this is what it actually feels like. Now, when the ROE, rate of exhaustion, is between 800 and 1100, that feels like a 95 to 98% RTP. All right? That's what it feels like. So, if we keep the ROE where it should be, rate of exhaustion, we can lower the RTP and then raise the win frequency, which is what we were trying to do in the first place, okay? This is how it works. 
The T3 math model is frequency of winds is 1 in 1.2 to 2.1, meaning you can do anything on that scale. You can have 1 in 1.2 if you wanted to feel like you were winning all the time, 1 in 1.5, and so on. This sort of wind frequency feels really, really great. The players feel like they're winning all the time. Frequency of each feature, I wrote in 90 to 110. You can actually make it anything you want. It can be 60, 70. That act part actually doesn't matter. Payout is actually 83% to 88%, and the rate of exhaustion is 800 to 1100. So it feels like an RTP of 95 to 97, depending on the rate of exhaustion. Now, when I give specs to uh, companies, math specs about what the math should be like, then what I tell them is, the last thing you should concern yourself with is the RTP. Don't care about the RTP as long as it's below 100. It could be 50, it could be 60, it could be 70. It doesn't matter as long as that's the frequency of wind, as long as that's the rate of exhaustion, and a few more things which I'm going to get to in a second. So the RTP is a function of everything else. Usually when you do math today, RTP is one of the first things you do and look at. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it comes out to that when you do everything right. But you, you shouldn't care about the RTP. It doesn't matter. So, like I said, rate of exhaustion represents the game experience and RTP doesn't. If you live with one thing here today, it's this. RTP doesn't matter. RTP is passé. Now, this is the T3 math model again, and now we're going to get to the few things that uh, are also part of the math. This is stuff I didn't get to, I'm not going to cover today. You also have to know if you, if you know what people like, and if you want to go for a win, for a social experience, you also have to control how many wins are bigger than the total bet. How many big wins do you get? bigger than three times total bet? How many huge wins? Bigger than 10 times the total bet? How many five of a kind wins? How many four of a kind wins? You want to create the entire experience, taking the ROE into, into uh, uh, consideration. There's also how many high, high symbol wins versus low symbol wins. Those are all part of the construct, but the basic part of it is rate of exhaustion and high frequency of wins. So, now you have the secret behind exclusive math model that has improved one company's updown by 43% and time on machine by 350%. It actually works. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.